Where's Stefan Tuit? When will he be back? Will he be back? It's been something of an untouchable topic here for a long time, and understandably so, but I'm going to address it today to the best of my ability. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. The Steelers are entering their bye week. They do have a couple of practices today and tomorrow. Then they get the NFL-mandated four days off before they're back out on the field early next week in advance of the game at Cleveland. One of the objectives that Mike Tomlin stated after the victory over the Seahawks the other day is to get a really good survey and sense of who might be on a trajectory to be available, whether it's against the Browns or the week after that or whatever. This is the week that I think a lot of people inside and outside the organization had circled toward trying to determine you know, who's ready, who's not, who can benefit from the extra week of being shut down, in parentheses, Zach Banner, and who might have been making progress behind the scenes or not making it. And the name that's still atop that list, and my goodness, is he missed on the field, is Tuit. If anyone had forgotten about Tuit's impact on this football team and how very, very, very good he was in 2020, performing at the same level, Level. This is the highest compliment I can give him. Performing at the same level as Cam Hayward. Right next to him. In fact, all of those guys together, Cam and Tuit and Tyson Alulu, who of course is also a guy that's on IR, made for the best defensive front in football when you incorporate T.J. Watt. Last year, Bud Dupree. This year, Alex Highsmith. It can still be a really, really good one, but you need to get those guys back. And the main guy you need to get back is to it. But it's been a challenge, to put it mildly, to determine what all is wrong. And it, it's it's one of those cases where you, you don't want to be the one that's pushing too hard on this stuff because... If you don't know, back in June, his brother was killed in a tragic hit-and-run accident. Devastated to it, devastated his whole family, as you would expect. And he, in turn, because of the trauma that had occurred, wasn't at all prepared for training camp when it hit. Not physically. That much has been confirmed, and you'd have to presume not mentally. So when he did get to camp, he was held off to the side. He was out on the perimeter with TJ, who you'll recall wasn't participating in team drills, but he was doing his own stuff on the sideline. Well, sometimes him and Steph would do them together. And then one day, Steph wasn't there at practice anymore. And again, it's one of those things where, you know, if if you're the one that's, you know, trying to stir up speculation or something reckless here, you'd, you'd be pretty much a monster. But it soon became clear and then confirmed that he'd had another injury. And from there, it would soon be confirmed that he, in fact, had a minor knee procedure, something that no one, and this part has been on the record, is expecting will hold him out for very long. But we don't know. We don't know. He's not visible. Uh, He's doing most of his work inside the training facility. 
He's in classroom settings. He's around his teammates. He's around his defensive line mates. He's aware of what's being uh, taught, what's being prescribed week after week. But until you see him out on the football field, you're not going to have any kind of sense for when he's going to be back. The last time anyone associated with the Steelers spoke to this publicly, at least with any substance other than, you know, we're wishing him well or whatever, was, predictably, Mr. Candid himself, Keith Butler, who had this to say back on September 30th. Man, I hope so. I, I really do. I hope I hope he's he's close. I hope he gets back to us when when what's that time frame I don't know I don't know uh, you know he's got some stuff there that he's got to overcome so uh, I'm on I'm gonna back him as much as I can he's a good football player and has been for us for a long time so I'm gl- I'll, I'll be glad when he gets back this portion of daily shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University choose from nearly 100 career focused programs leading to bachelor's master's doctoral degrees choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying Whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. He's missed, man. He's missed. And it would make a massive difference to this defense to have him back, especially him. Because you'll remember that in 2020, when the Steelers had their most effective four-man rush, Steph was that guy lined up with Cam. Yeah, it, you know, Alulu and others got involved, as we've seen this year. Chris Wormley, Isaiah Bugs get involved, sometimes good and sometimes like the third quarter Sunday, not so good. But Steph, he... You know, he he fixes that. He just does. I don't say that about any old player. But that problem, the thing that you saw the Seahawks doing, that doesn't exist if 91's on the field. That's how, I was about to say good, that's how great he was in 2020. I can tell you, speaking from my own perspective, that... My belief is that Steph will be back. My belief is that it's not imminent. Simply from the standpoint that he has to be on the field, he has to be practicing, and he has to show that he can perform at a level that's as high as expected, but also that's you know safe. So I'm not imagining that there's going to be some magical arrival on his part and that, hey guys, I'm here. Let's go. We're let's go. Everybody on the bus. We're going to Cleveland. Follow me. I, you're just not going to see that. You're not going to see that. But what I do think could be coming before long is that Steph could get activated off injured reserve. At which point, as we're seeing now with Banner, the Steelers have a three week time period in which to either activate him on the 53-man roster or his season's done. And I I believe that you're going to see that part of it sooner rather than later. But again, not, you know, not something that's going to be right around the corner. And that hurts, and I know that, and I, I know that people miss having him on the field, fans do, and I've started to see just these traces of things on social media about, you know, oh, that guy, you can't count him on whatever. Listen, save that, okay? Save that for somebody else. This is an extraordinary circumstance. When we come back, just one question. time for just one question and that's always brought to you by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg Garvin, Kelly and George LGKG, they represent people who are hurt in car accidents who've 
filed for workers' comp who need assistance with medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG are super lawyers. Blare the trumpets when I say that. Super lawyers. They've been designated that for over 15 years. That's a real thing. It means they've been designated among the top 5% of attorneys in all of Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. And today's J1Q comes from Ben, who asks, I know that Ben Roethlisberger prefers to be in the shotgun because it allows him to better read the defense and doesn't require the backpedaling. But by running so many plays from the shotgun, it seems to result in a lot of running plays requiring Najee Harris to start his run from virtually a dead stop. Why aren't they doing anything they can to get Najee some momentum before hitting the line? Start under center, go in motion, anything. Well, do you remember the one offensive drive Sunday where the Steelers had two plays within a three-play sequence where exactly that happened, meaning the good version of what you're talking about. One of those was the 25-yard run by Deontay Johnson coming around end, and he was coming with a full head of steam. And the play just feels different when it's materializing that way, doesn't it? I think that's what you're talking about here where you feel like the runner's coming and he looks dangerous and it feels dangerous and way more important than that is dangerous if the play is blocked properly. Najee had one of those too. And it was in a similar setting. Why isn't Ben under center? Look, that's the part of this that kind of, because it feels like pursuing drama and whatever. Ben's been under center more this season than he's been in a long, long time. It's not that he refuses to be there. It's not that he's, uh, you know, trying to milk something or be a prima donna or whatever else here. It is exactly what you described. He's more comfortable in the shotgun. He feels like he can survey the field. He feels like he has more time to react to what it is that he sees, all of which, by the way, would be a whole lot more compelling if he were seeing things downfield more than he has been, because that's when you're really, you know, you're going into the meeting rooms arguing from a position of strength as opposed to what we're seeing now, which is a a whole lot of check downs. I love seeing these guys hit the line of scrimmage or hit the perimeter, try to get around the edge with the momentum that you're describing I don't know that under center or not under center is going to make that much of a difference, but we have already seen that there are a lot of moving parts when the Steelers run the ball. And that can be occasionally very effective, in particular, by the way, down by the goal line. How many times have we seen this offense get down within the five and just whip up some play that gets the ball to somebody you don't even know they have it in their hands and they're walking into the end zone untouched kind of what like what you saw with uh eric ebron there on sunday looked like the juju play although nobody with the team would confirm that you do want to see this momentum you do want to see this team hit the line aggressively you want to see them do everything aggressively Ben, look, you could go back over the whole film, and I have. I watched the game again yesterday, and you're going to find that the Steelers' offense looks its best when it is just moving forward and being authoritative. The best runs, the best plays of all kind have been when they've gone straight ahead and they've stopped screwing around with all the left-right. It won't always work. And you know what? It didn't always work Sunday. But you got to keep doing it, you know? Everybody, including the head coach, acknowledged after the game that one of the reasons the offense was able to at least get something done was that they pursued 
a war of attrition mentality. They might get stopped with the run early on, but they weren't going to get stopped in the fourth quarter, so they stayed with it. Do that. Go at these opponents. Go at them like you mean it. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Let's do another one tomorrow. <laughs>